Hi, Governor. Uh, Any, uh, Hello. Happy New Year. agreement on, yeah. on revenues and whether a reinstatement of nine C's makes sense at this point? I think the uh, I think the final conversation on revenues on Friday, right? I think that's when the Ways and Means folks are getting together to confirm 18 revenue, which obviously will be built off of an agreement on 17 revenue. But in terms of 17, would the 17 revenue decision wait for that then, for the consensus revenue on 18? Uh, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm assuming that's when those guys are going to talk about it. But I mean, the December numbers were 38 million below. Uh, the current benchmark for the year, which is actually, you know, plus or minus 0.3 percent, which is not a bad place to be, but it's certainly not, um, it's certainly not a big increase relative to uh, to where the projections were a few months ago. Governor Baker, you have this AED, AED bill on your desk. Is this something that you plan to sign in the future to require schools to have AEDs on site for athletes? I normally don't talk about um, legislation that's on our desk until it's gone through a full review, but I'm, I happen to be pretty familiar with that particular bill, and uh, we're going to sign it, and I congratulate the legislature for getting it done. And what are some of your big priorities for this upcoming legislative session? That you, did you guys talk about any of those priorities? We were talking about mostly what I would describe as uh, sort of issues we've been working on together over the course of the past year or so, and, and some on some of the, the new stuff. but. I'll let that. I'll let. Stuff. I'll let the new stuff play out over the course of the next several weeks. Okay. I was hoping that we'll preview weigh in on that legislation that Senator Eldridge is working on. That looks to be releasing those who are facing marijuana charges, and it's still in the works. But just the general premise of it that is criminal justice reform. I was hoping to get all three of your thoughts on that. Is that well, the, I, some of you support? I mean, I, I I believe under Massachusetts law, um, to be arrested just on a marijuana distribution charge, I think you have to have like 50 pounds or more. I mean, you're a major league dealer. And um, and that is and was state law um, at the point in time that somebody would have been arrested and convicted for that. We do have a pardons and commutations process in Massachusetts. If somebody wants to pursue that, they can. Um, but I certainly wouldn't support um, rewriting law retroactively. I would never agree to rewrite law retroactively in the other direction either. That's not the way it's supposed to work. I mean, most people know what the laws are and they're expected to abide by them. Mr. Peters? I would think that, uh, first of all, if you're asking whether it would be part of the criminal justice reform, I would think not. I would think a bill such as that should be written and go through the general process of a hearing and, and whatnot. In terms of the retroactivity, I would think it would probably be very difficult uh, for that to, to consider in terms of retroactivity. but. Again, I would let it go through the uh, process and, and see what goes and happens from there. Mr. Mr. Speaker, President? eliminating uh, mandatory. What? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I'm Mr. getting President? a little <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> it's got to go through the legislative process. Uh, first, I heard of this idea just the other day. So uh, the, the bill will be filed. We'll have a public hearing. We'll have a discussion. I think this crosses both the marijuana discussion and the criminal justice reform discussion, so there will be at least two venues where this can be thought through. Mr. Speaker, keeping on criminal justice, uh, Representative Holmes recently told us that after meeting with you, you told him that uh, you didn't have the votes in the House to get rid of all mandatory minimum sentencing. Uh, is that an accurate portrayal of, of your position I, I think right what now? I said was I'm uncertain as to whether I have all of uh, the votes to just completely do away with mandatory uh, minimums. I would probably or of, of the opinion uh, you know, uh, myself and knowing the body as, as, as I do know it, I would probably find that to be very difficult to just say dispense with all mandatory minimums. There may be some uh, that could require some um, discussion, but just to say a blanket uh, doing away with mandatory sentences, uh, I would think, I would think uh, would be difficult in the House, but I haven't taken the temperature of the body as of yet. Do you, the the Do you support the measure? Do you support the measure? Would I support? Yeah. Uh, I would probably, there may be some where I may. I have to take a look at each and every one, quite frankly. But I do not think that I would be in support of just doing away with all mandatory minimums. Do you want to look at sentencing practices as part of the criminal justice reform, both Mr. Speaker and Mr. President? Sorry. Do you want to look at, uh, at sentencing practices as part of the criminal justice reform? Obviously, the CSG review focused more heavily on post-sentencing uh, post supervision. My feeling would be that when we went into this process, what I wanted 
what I look forward to seeing done was three things. First of all, seeing you know a uh, prior to person being sent to jail, were there any alternatives, i.e., such as what's happening, what I've seen, some of the good work that some of the drug courts have done, where possible. Secondly, once a person is incarcerated, what's being done there in terms of their education, in terms of uh, once they get out, and, and you know what what happens to them at that time, what type of opportunities can be provided to them because of what their assistance they are receiving, what education they're receiving, and finally, which I consider to be the most important issue that I wanted to see addressed, was that issue of reticent recidivism. When you hear a 40, 50, 60 percent of folks getting out, then something, quite frankly, is, is wrong with this system. And the way it's described to me, in, in many cases, some of these folks just aren't being prepared to go out into, into the uh, so-called uh, real world, back into, right back into the world. They're not being prepared. They're not being educated. They're not being given opportunities in terms of education, whether it's a trade or whatever. So I, I want to make sure that those types of folks um, are being uh, better prepared, uh, are, have a much better ability to get a job so that uh, we can stop them from getting back into the system that they just got out of. Mr. Speaker and Mr. President, given the December revenue report that the governor referenced earlier, has your thinking changed about potentially reinstating some of the, those nine CPEPs? I'd like to see some... Uh, uh, restored, and I'm hoping that the January numbers will reinforce that uh, we're still heading in the right direction and we can revisit uh, some of those cuts. I think we have to take a look at uh, uh, January right now. I think we're heading in the right direction, but having said that, I think um, obviously uh, being fiscally conservative, I think we have to uh, uh, make sure uh, that we are in a good fiscal position. I think the only way we can do that is to is to wait and see what happens in January. Mr. Well, and another thing, another thing we could do on this is if we uh, made Airbnb a priority and get that through early in the year, that'll start generating some additional revenue. And so maybe that's another way we could cut at this problem. Governor, Mr. Speaker, we saw some Mr. Speaker, snow I'll over the weekend. Go ahead, I want to ask you about taxes. Uh, the governor <clears throat> has held the position no new taxes for the duration of his public political career in Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> Senate, Senate President Rosenberg has said that in his speech just last week that the state needs new revenue. What say you, who under the Constitution has the final decision about whether money bill comes forward or not? I still think that uh, it's much too premature to or early for us to be talking uh, about that. As you know, I think uh, uh, I have always been of the thing that taxes sort of as a last resort. Uh, but having said that, I think uh, right now it's important, let's see what happens Friday, but more importantly, let's see what happens relative to the hearings that are going to be held. Um, and now I'll need to have some long-term uh, discussions with my with the uh, House Chair of Ways and Means at that point and, and see exactly where we are in terms of budgetary needs and and where we are in terms of revenue to meet those needs. Last year, you said there would be no new taxes in the House Ways and Means budget. You cited the fact that a lot of people, even though the economy was better, are still struggling day to day, and you didn't think it was fair to place an extra burden on middle class folks who you still you heard from were still struggling. Do you think that's still the case? Do you still feel for here from That's folks? always a concern that I have in terms of what's going on and talking to folks throughout the state in terms of their trying to meet their needs day to day. But having said that, we also have an obligation in terms of the folks of Massachusetts to make sure that we, you know, care for those who, who need us, uh, who, who need the services of the Commonwealth the most. So again, I would say that uh, I think that's something that has to be weighed in the process. Um, but uh, most importantly, I think that that decision has to wait until we, we have more information in terms of revenue. Let's talk about a little bit of snow. Well, um, I guess, take care. See you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I guess I would say the following. Um, we had a pretty good day on Saturday, uh, a decent day on Sunday. Um, and this morning it was mixed. Um, we had a pretty good day on the, on the bus routes, a pretty good day on the transit piece. Um, and parts of the commuter rail did well up until about 8 o'clock. And then after 8 o'clock, the commuter rail had some issues, most of which related to mechanical issues. Um, this is obviously 
going to be a continuing focus of the folks both at the commuter rail and at the MBTA on a go-forward basis. You know, this is the first major test of the winter. There will be more, and, uh, and they're going to need to do better. Um, I do think uh, the fact that they're going to spend uh, a good part of today prepping for tomorrow morning and making sure that uh, they keep a lot of those trains running all the way through the night to keep them the engines warm will help. But it was, uh, it was definitely a mixed bag today on the commuter rail, although, as I said, the transit system and the bus system had a good morning. And are you, you excited go, to attend you. the president-elect's inauguration later this month? Well, as I said before, I, you know, as governor of the Commonwealth of Mass, I would attend a presidential inauguration no matter who the president was if I got invited. Um, I'm certainly uh, anxious to have a chance to talk to some of the folks in D.C. about some of the issues we care about here in Massachusetts. We've been asked for... Uh, commentary on a variety of issues, I think, which is pretty standard for a new administration coming in. And uh, we're going to do what we can to make sure that we and our congressional delegation work hard to make sure our voices are heard on the issues we care about. Do you think Thanks, it's Thanks, guys. to make those voices heard? Is transportation oh. one of those issues? Of course. <laughs>